Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Rochelle Harrison Pless. Thanks for joining us. Coming up. Moment of truth for Tunisia's Prime Minister designate Youssef Shahed facing a vote of confidence in Parliament, one he's expected to win. Rwanda cracks down on terror suspects. Authorities say they've uncovered a homegrown militant network and have stepped up their hunt for Islamist extremists. And one of Mozambique's premier safari destinations under threat, wildlife survival at Gorongosa National Park on the line amid political tensions and a devastating drought. But first, violent scuffles erupted at an anti-government protest in Zimbabwe on Friday. Riot police fired tear gas and water cannon at hundreds of opposition supporters who'd gathered in the capital Harare. The clashes came despite an 11th hour high court ruling that saw the rally get the go-ahead. Public anger has soared amid a chronic cash shortage and skyrocketing unemployment. Demonstrators are demanding electoral reform ahead of a vote set for 2018, but the country's 92-year-old president, Robert Mugabe, says he will stand again. The political parties of Zimbabwe have come together and today they were, we were supposed to march against this regime so that it can have a pace forward in terms of having uh, electoral reforms. But it's unfortunate that the police uh, or, or the officer commanding uh, CBD uh, Saunyama has re refused to, to grant us permission. Mr. Mugabe, it's time you wake up. It's time you respected our people. You have no authority to abuse our money. Next, Tunisia's Prime Minister designate is expected to get the green light from the country's lawmakers, with Youssef Shahed and his proposed cabinet facing a vote of confidence this Friday night. If he wins the vote, he'll take the country's reins amid economic woes, soaring unemployment and a slump in tourism. Shahed has promised to tackle these challenges head on, but says the country must be prepared to make sacrifices. Sandro Lutyens has the latest from Tunis. Tonight will probably be the end of a three months long political soap opera unless something extraordinary happens. Yusuf Shahid's government uh, is expected to be confirmed in parliament with a large uh, majority, a very comfortable majority within a few hours. But that was far from being a done deal earlier this week when Yusuf Shahid uh, first submitted his uh, new cabinet. Many uh, parties expressed their reservations. One party that is part of the government even uh, threatened to actually withdraw but Yusuf Shahid did not move an inch. He spent the week trying to convince uh, the uh, reluctant once and now. Most parties have decided that they will not uh, try and take the risk of blocking the political process, of blocking uh, the birth of the seventh government within less than six years uh, in Tunisia. However, the MPs have been holding speeches, many, many speeches uh, since this morning behind me in the plenary uh, hall. They want to make it clear uh, to Yusuf Shahid's government that it will be kept on a tight leash. Tunisia is facing major uh, challenges. It's facing a deep economic and social crisis. And the government says that if uh, confirmed, they will start work right uh, away, taking oath tomorrow uh, with the handover on Monday and with the first Council of Ministers on Wednesday with a focus on security. Osman Kat correspondent uh, Sandro Lutyens reporting there. The death toll from a brazen attack on a seaside restaurant in the Somali capital has risen to 10. Islamist militants from Al-Shabaab set off a car bomb outside the Banadir Beach Club on Mogadishu's Lido Beach on Thursday night. Gunmen stormed the building, sparking a six-hour firefight with local security forces. Somali police say two assailants were among those killed, while a third was arrested. Now, authorities in Rwanda are cracking down on suspected Islamist extremists. Just last week, local police killed four men and arrested three others accused of terror links. It comes after Rwandan security forces assassinated an imam in January amid claims they've uncovered a homegrown militant network. This reports from Thais Brook and Duncan Woodside. Bugarama, a small town like any other in Rwanda, but in the early hours of Friday last week, the police stormed this house. Six Muslim preachers were inside. Um, we heard gunshotting 
then we wake it up. We, we went on window. When we, we look out, we found some, some police saying, mm, they were shouting, saying, get out, get out. According to some witnesses, three men were killed when they resisted arrest. The other three are still in police custody. All are accused of jihadi recruitment. They told us that Islam is a path that leads to God, that it leads to heaven, and that if we joined Islam, we would get salvation easily and quickly. But we had peaceful discussions. None of the six hid their desire to preach Islam. At this mosque off camera, worshippers deplored what they called force against unarmed men. Relatives of the victims, initially keen to talk to us, changed their minds, scared of the authorities' reaction. The police say they found extremist propaganda. They didn't grant our requests for interviews. In a separate case, 23 Rwandans face prosecution on terror charges. The authorities are yet to present evidence pointing to the emergence of an Islamic terror network in Rwanda. The case has been thrown out of court. A South African judge has dismissed an appeal by state prosecutors for a harsher sentence against disgraced athlete Oscar Pistorius, saying it would have had little chances of success. The Paralympian got six years behind bars for murdering his girlfriend Reva Steenkamp in 2013. Prosecutors blasted the punishment as shockingly lenient, but they now have 21 days to take their case to the country's Supreme Court of Appeal. Now, we last saw him in Rio at the Olympic Games closing ceremony dressed as Super Mario. Well, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has ditched the red cap for his trip to Nairobi as he launched the Tokyo International Summit on African Development. But the Japanese leader did get a red carpet when he was welcomed to the Kenyan capital by President Uhuru Kenyatta. The two heads of state said that Japan and African leaders should work together to encourage industrialization across the continent and said that's the key to stamping out poverty and boosting economic growth. And finally, Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique is the country's largest wildlife sanctuary. A conservation project launched after a lengthy civil war saw several species brought back from the brink of extinction. But the park's renaissance is at risk amid fresh fears for the animal's survival. As Jennifer Ben Brahim reports, simmering political tensions are threatening to undo all the good work of the past. Over the past 10 years, Mozambique's Gorongosa National Park has begun to recover after almost two decades of civil war. But now, as a guerrilla war brews in the middle of the country, its biodiversity is under threat once again. Gorongosa Park is a prime target only because people can no longer harvest enough, and so they go after the animals in an effort to feed themselves. The park is now home to more than 72,000 animals, protected by 150 rangers and a team of scientists. Elephants and waterbuck roam the reserve, thanks to a restoration project funded by an American philanthropist. But despite the park's resources, there's concern that the fighting could ruin it all. More people, fome, doença. People die. There's hunger, disease. All of it comes from the conflict within the country. During the civil war, they destroyed everything, and we had to rebuild. This time, I don't know whether they're going to destroy or not. Mozambique's rebels picked up arms three years ago against the ruling party in power since independence in 1975. The rebels' leader lives in hiding in the mountains beside the park. The violence has led to a dramatic drop in visitor numbers, down from 7,000 four years ago to just 1,000 last year. People are afraid to come here. Today, for example, we have four tourists. All the other occupants work directly or indirectly for the park. They're scientists or other employees. In the Sena language, Gorongosa means place of danger and death. And while peace talks between the government and Renamo rebels offers hope, 
the park's fragile ecosystem remains in constant danger from drought, poaching and conflict. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Eye on Africa. Stay with us. Shona's back after the break with more news as Live from Paris continues.